What is up, NFC East fans? We are back again with Clashing Conferences Podcast. If you are new to the show, we're a weekly uh, show here. First half, we look back at the week that just happened. The second half, we'll look ahead to the, the week to, to come. If you're a regular listener, you already know, going to be a lot of trash talk, some good entertainment, some great picks and analysis. Uh, please like and subscribe if you're enjoying so far through five or six episodes here. But uh, looking back at the prior week, let's get some, uh, some, some, some rundown of what happened here. We had two wins, one by Dallas over the Chargers, and a second win by the Redskins, or the Commanders, over the Falcons. No wins for the Giants or the Eagles, but we did get a cover by the Giants, a pretty darn good cover against those tough Bills. In our internal competition, we had three categories again last week. The points allowed category was won by the Giants and Christopher Pete Peterson. Reception touchdowns was a win for Paul Douglas and the Washington Commanders. And receiving yards, the highest player with receiving yards this week was A.J. Brown for Greg and the Eagles. So on the season, we have Randy at nine points, but everybody moving up a slot against him this week. Greg's up to six. Chris, toe for Pete, you're up to four. Paul Douglas getting his second point of the year. So that's where we stand on the internal competition. Uh, let's lead off this week. I think uh, we had Paul on punishment last week. So why don't we let him let him go first this week? He had some 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 weak weak picks on his picks last week, but I gotta say that his analysis on his Redskins game couldn't have been on more on point than it was. He said, and I quote, as usual, um, Desmond Ritter would dress up for Halloween as Dak mm. Prescott and throw three picks. So he threw three picks. He looked just like Dak out there. Paul, tell us about uh, your big win this week and, and uh, any trash talk you want to talk against these other three guys. Yeah, I was pretty happy with the week. Um, you know, uh, at the end, it got a little uh, dicey, but uh, for the at least the first three quarters, we we're looking pretty dominant for the most part. Um, towards the end, you know, uh, Sam Howell started to stand in there again uh, like a rookie, take a couple of sacks, I think three and like four plays like towards the end. Um, but, you know, we still pulled it out, um, moved the ball pretty well, I thought. Um, I didn't really think the Falcons were all that ba- all that great, but... They're really not that bad of a team, um, but they put a whole lot of stock in their run game. Uh, there's not much of a, uh, of a of a receiving core out there. Although, of course, I, I for the last this is the only year I haven't had Kyle Pitts on a uh, on a fantasy <laughs> team, and I I've been trashing him. Like literally, like I think I said last week that it's very possible that Kyle Pitts is maybe the problem with Kyle Pitts, yep. and of course he heard me. And blew up and turned into a football player. So I don't know. Good for him, I guess. I mean, you know, he might even be a waiver wire pickup because I think that he's probably, um, you know, uh, not even on uh, most rosters at this point because of his performance. But no, he showed up. You know, I had drank London in one of my fantasy leagues, so that was nice to see. But um, overall, it was a, a good game. I, to be honest, uh, similar to that crappy game last night. We had hands on Desmond Ritter a couple of times and Jen just let him go for whatever. It was catch and release. I don't know what restricted pond we were fishing in, but it was catch and release. It was ridiculous, uh, especially towards the end. Um, I can't remember who had said it. I think it was Troy Aikman over the weekend. I think he's the one that said, uh, yeah, I can't remember who it was. Maybe it was Tony Romo said it was like a slippery salmon. Uh, <laughs> probably like the worst Sanchez. take. What? Oh yeah. Oh, of course. Sorry. I, I could, I, I can't believe I got every him mixed up with the, the Sanchez. Um, Slippery yeah, that was salmon the, with Vaseline. Yeah, yeah. That was the worst Ooh. take I've ever heard in my life. And <laughs> somehow some group is going to be offended by it. I don't know how or why, <laughs> but they're going to put it together. And that, that somehow was offensive. Uh, and I'm with them because I was pretty offended by it. That was ridiculous. <laughs> um, but you know, that that's what Desmond Ritter looked like when he was out there uh, uh, quite a few times. So, you know, I, I used to tell my kids when they were uh, playing flag football, don't run for where the guy is. Run for where he's going to be when you get to him. You know, it just it didn't take a whole lot of jukes. Uh, but we still pulled it out. Really happy with the win. 
nice tune-up to the bye week we're going to have this week. Uh, when I say bye week, I guess it's just like the easy win or whatever you call it, but we'll get to that later. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I was absolutely, absolutely unimpressed with the uh, the Cowboys last night. There was not a slipperier salmon on earth <laughs> than Dak Prescott. I mean, people were all over him, and he just slipped through there, that sly bastard. Um, I, 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 we already talked about it. There were some really bad coaching decisions on the Chargers, and I really think that was the turning point of the game. Otherwise, we're looking at an even record between the Redskins and the Cowboys, you know, if that had gone the way it was supposed to. Um, well, we're so, not. Well, you know, we're close. You know, close counts in no. ha- horseshoes, horseshoes and hand grenades, but... You and know, podcasts. Yeah, you know. And podcasts, <laughs> but not hey, football. Hey, close does count because what happened to Terrell Owens? You know, he's on, you know, he played for two of the teams that are representing this podcast. Somebody hit him with a car yesterday or the day before, and he didn't even need medical attention. So, you know, close does count. Um, but, um, no, the, uh, oh, you, you caught your head. Do you not know about that, Randy? Well, no, I'm just trying to figure out how that has to do with close counts. That's all. <laughs> Well, you said close doesn't use a close doesn't count. It does. It does. You know, if well, someone hits you, it wasn't that he was close to getting hit. He got hit. I, I don't. I don't see how <laughs> he that actually ties got in. hit. I don't see and how that ties in. He didn't get hurt. Counts. I guess. Well, I don't know. Maybe it's a segue into my next comment that I'm hoping something similar happens in your current position there, sir. So I'll get back to the uh, the the Eagles game. Uh, the Eagles. I mean, it had to come at some point, and like similar to last year against us it came against a team you weren't expecting it to come against to uh, come against. So uh, they looked, I wouldn't even say mediocre to be honest. Like I can't say just because I have Jalen hurts in fantasy had him in a, in a, in a gambling pool as well. And he came out as, you know, based on the stats, actually the number one quarterback uh, of the week. Um, so I, I can't put it totally on him. Uh, but, my, my Georgia, the, the Georgia baby bulldogs really weren't, didn't really play like bulldogs as much as, as they normally were, but it was something that needed to happen. Uh, I'm completely fine the way it happened, you know, turn, make like, whatever's going to make Zach Wilson relevant. Cause somebody on here said that Zach Wilson isn't a terrible quarterback. Uh, I can't remember who it was, but they were wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Of course you were wrong. He is an absolute terrible quarterback when he's got milfs in the, uh, in the stands, he just balls out. Um, so that's, that's all for him. But, you know, I, I think, I think that I don't normally like to do this, but I will go ahead and I actually kind of want to pass this to, to Randy to actually hear his take this week. I understand his take is going to be real hard on the Eagles, but you lost one. So you can't say, but so much you're four and two deserve to be three and three and your team sucks. Hey, Paul, quarterback let's, let's, Paul, let's quit defending the Eagles, okay? <laughs> you got your own team to defend. Now, listen, listen, I'm Mike, give me a little help here. Uh, Wh- which of these guys predicted this Cowboys game correctly? Not me. Um, Randy, uh, I'm looking at my list here. I think it might have been just you. Okay, and who predicted the Eagles game correctly? Uh, uh, all, also, the, the one that we refer to sometimes as Nostradamus, you. And and who predicted the Giants game correctly if Tyrod Taylor played? Uh, both you and Paul, actually, okay. on that one. I okay. got to give Paul and, some love there. And, and who predicted the Washington game correctly? Uh, I believe I believe maybe Randy. Um, so the, you got everything you say, right. Hold on. Do you say Greg didn't predict anything right there? Ofer. Yep. And, and Topher didn't predict everything correctly? Well, well let's let's see here. There, we 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 you went four and zero on your picks. I also have here that you had a very good line on Herbert and Allen not going off in your game, and they were under. They didn't get shut out completely, but they were both under their, you know, what would normally be for them. Uh, the two things you did get wrong, Paul already pointed one out. Wilson was a bad analysis, and the one that I'm really looking at is the one thing that's not looking accurate on what you said last week and i think greg will like this i'm I'm gonna quote again here if i can find it you I said like about the eagles um it'll be a matter of time before every team in the league is doing the tush push and the eagles will <laughs> lose their edge well that has not proven to be correct these other teams been, trying to do the tush push it's, it's been, are it's failing been one week mike it's been one week <laughs> 
Give it time. <laughs> Give it time. No, I just again, I, I'm I'm trying to be very humble with this, but I feel like I correctly <laughs> picked every game again. Four for four. My, again, everybody. It seems like when you guys all say the Cowboys are going to lose, they freaking win. Uh, it just seems like every time there's 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 hatred. It's a win for me. It always it also seems like when I lose, I lose every game, and when I win, I win every one. But uh, I got a couple pointers on a couple of games. One is, Paul, you guys played Atlanta. You're a 500 team because you played Atlanta. I call that I, they're 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 they're, they're a bottom of the barrel team that sometimes plays a little bit up to competition. I still don't think that makes Washington a 500 worthy team. But whatever, we'll leave it at that. Topher. I've got to say, watching your Giants, and, and Steve brought this up to me earlier, but the, the, the way your coach tore apart the best acting quarterback that he's had all year, when that guy made a bad decision on a play call that that coach called, the way he tore Tyron <laughs> Taylor up, like a... like That was all on him, man. If we win the game, if they like just kick the field goal there. Well, they, we we may have, but the coach called the play. Would have, and Tyrod did what he, he did thought not call was the play. About. The coach called the play. Ty, it was an option play. Tyrod shows to pan it he off. All the bowled back. into a run with 14 seconds and no timeouts. Tyrod made a bad call, but stupid like, for a quarterback that almost beat you against one of the most elite teams in the NFL. For your coach to act the way he acted. We would have won that game if Daniel Jones it, played. It looked like it looked we like, won that game it, it looked like a coach played. who's scared for his job that was trying to say, <laughs> that was trying to say, oh he my gosh, I it wasn't my fault. It's not my fault we're in this position. But a backup quarterback it was a made run that offensive or made throw that offen option. Made that offense look at least exciting to watch for the first time this year. And, and it was for him to keep it if he thought he could keep it. And it was nice to see it a was Giants a run quarterback. Throw it was nice to see a Giants quarterback that didn't lay on the turf every time someone got within ten yards. Yeah, the, the line, ten I yards mean, in. Believe it or not, it, it played better. I, Justin and, Pugh and, played better. It and, worked. And, 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 and I, I'm just saying, it was. They, I, they do work every I, week I, and I'm try just to get curious. better. So right now, again, I feel like I'm the only Giants fan here. Right now, should Tyrod <laughs> Taylor start next week? Because no. if I, well, I mean, he probably I, will. As a Giants, as, as, as the only true Giants fan on the podcast, I want a winning <laughs> quarterback for that team. So I'm just wondering, you know, are you gonna, are, when are you gonna jump the bad wagon and finally Never. say, no, Never. we win that game with Daniel Jones. We win oh, that game with a healthy on, Daniel man. Jones. Look at what. So you're forgetting. You're forgetting. Jones. Not only. Not only is the line. The line actually played a little better. Just like our defense played. Better. Like it plays better each week. It was in the Niners game. It's in the Miami game. It was in this game. I don't we know. win that game. Plus, Daniel Jones's numbers do go up when Saquon Barkley plays. Tyrod so, Taylor had 200 yards. Daniel Jones gets anywhere from like 130 to 200 yards each week. So not the week. Not the week we beat uh, Arizona when he had now, 320. To, Greg, to jump but, on your squeaker Eagles, the Eagles that have squeaked through five games and finally they paid for it. Who to see that coming? But all I'm saying, next week you play Miami, and this loss will do one of two things. It's either going to get your heads out of your butts, and you're actually going to play football for a full four quarters, or it's the start of, I had a friend of mine, an Eagles fan, say today, he's starting to feel the Wentz effect. The effect that Wentz is starting to lose timing, Wentz slash Hurts, and he's a big Eagles fan with his receivers, and that Wentz was, Hurts is, the guy who's going to start going downhill from here. I don't know which way it's going to go, but I do know that I told you this was coming. This was coming because they were squeaking out way too many games. And they're going to, now that you, you got your first loss against a team you shouldn't have lost against, now the gauntlet's coming up. Are you going to be eight and eight this year? So far. Are you going to be eight and eight, eight this year? Are well, you they're also, this year? I'm sorry, they're eight, also nine, nine and eight. They're scared because they had to go out and get a 30-time uh, Pro Bowler in uh, the timeless <laughs> treasure, Julio Jones, today. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for ruining my thunder, Paul. Yeah. Uh, that, Jeez. So, yeah. yeah, that just was going to make about as much noise as a him. fart. Just a couple <laughs> more things, Greg. Just a couple <laughs> more things. And the one thing I, I, I just can't get over the fact is that, again, here we go, this time of year, and I, uh, the Cowboys are going into a bye. Guess what's starting to bite the Eagles like it did a couple of years ago? 
injuries. Lane Johnson getting hurt. No. I cannot imagine that Eagles team has been blessed with good health this year. You guys are starting to get the injury bug. I don't see. They're losing one lineman. I don't see. An one, off, one guy. Uh, stop about your line, Chris. I don't see a lot going on right now. <laughs> I just, I can't, I can't see. You Let him make his point, Chris. <laughs> continuing to squeak out these wins. And oh, by I'm, the way, one more thing. Fly, Eagles, fly, Greg. Fly, Eagles, fly. You well, it's play. funny you say that because yeah. it's like I look, I look at the standings and it, it shows the Eagles are five and one, mm-hmm. and Dallas is four and two. Mm-hmm. Just pointing that out. Uh, I also see that you know we have you in two weeks, so mm-hmm. we'll see what happens in two weeks. But to answer your question, no, I this is nothing to do with a Wentz effect. Um, in my mind, it was nothing but pure. Uh, arrogance. If you want to know the truth and how I really feel, I think Nick Sirianni and the O coordinator and Hertz were like, "Oh, Sauce Gardner out. Oh, you're bringing up three practice squad cornerbacks. Cor- we're going to throw the ball all over you." And forget the fact that the Giant or the Giants, the Jets are the 28th ranked rushing defense in the league, and forget the fact that we are a rushing team. And the rush sets up the play action, which sets up the pass. It's like but Greg, I am a 45-year-old dude that played low, 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 low-level college football. Everybody knows that, and that's what just pisses me off more than anything right now. Greg I'm is, fired up. As long yeah, why as does I, that happen? I, I, I am curious. What makes you – why did why do that? Listen, it is, it as is long sense. as I've watched the Eagles, which hasn't been forever, but they – have historically, it doesn't matter what coach they have. I think it's part since you've seen Romo and them fans tight pants. Fault. I think it's part of the fans' fault. You guys ru- run the ball effectively, but you never stick with it. It doesn't matter how good it's going. You guys want to be a high flying offense. And you guys our don't owner have that wants quarterback. Our owner, what do you mean we don't have the quarterback? Have Last the quarterback. year, two years ago, he was. What are you talking you about? You don't have a quarterback that's going to be a Tom Brady and not run around. And make plays with his feet. You don't have the quarterback that's just a passing quarterback. You did you not watch last year where he was runner up for the MVP and actually played better and than Mahomes in the, the Super Bowl? The stats you keep giving out show his rushing yards. That is a quarterback that needs to use his legs to make plays, not just his pocket passer. Well, I mean, the, the, he is a rushing quarterback, but he also has a good ball and throws the ball He's very well. He's a dual well. threat. He does a dual ball threat. Well. The point is, though, you need to establish a run game, and the Eagles consistently, I'm, year I agree after with that. year, never do it. We have an owner and we have a general manager that and a insists on throwing. Fan base. Oh, yeah, right. Crappy fan base. Get out of here. I was just trying to say, I'm just throwing this in since you yelled at me about the line. I wasn't even talking about mine. I was just trying to say, like, he's used to having, he's used Listen, to having, like, a perfect situation. You guys are situation. being mean to me. <laughs> and we have yeah. our whole we right side of our line. We lost one guy, and it just we didn't lose one guy. I mean, we lost our whole right huge. side. Yeah, but come on. Yeah. Greg, we're not have an offensive line guys play- last year or what? No, we're not. I'm I just think it's crazy how he faces a little wanna- adversity, and then he looks like Dak Prescott. He I looked, looked I like hear, Dak Prescott last night. I want to hear the rest Sunday. of your takes for this week. Say, huh? What's that? I want to hear the rest of your takes for this week. So, I mean, I think it was hard. I, I'm pissed. I'm still pissed off. We rushed the ball for under 15 times. He dropped back the pass 54 times. 54. There is no goddamn reason to do that against a team that's 28th in the league in rushing. I'm was it 54? I thought, I thought it was 45. It, it he was 54? has 45 pass attempts, but he dropped back to throw the ball uh, 54 times and 10 of them were rushes um, or sacks. Like I'm just, I'm just, re- I'm still pissed off. Phillies won. I couldn't even enjoy the Phillies win last night because I'm still pissed and I'm probably going to be pissed tomorrow too. It's frustrating. It's very frustrating. And I'm going to be really pissed on Sunday. Nick Sirianni's coming out to the school in a couple weeks and I'm going to tell him run the damn ball. Like I just, I get so frustrated and it's something that we've been yelling for years and years and years. And last year we started doing it and we did well, 17, same thing happened. Um, Wentz got hurt. We started running the ball and we did well. We got to the Super Bowl. So it's, it's frustrating. You know, like, like I mentioned, we missed, uh, Lane got injured. We're missing our right uh, guard as well. So we have Driscoll coming in, um, you know, and, and we're out. Uh, Reed Blankens, our safety got hurt again. Um, you know, Carter didn't play. One of the baby Bulldogs, that's probably why I didn't hear about him. He didn't even play. 
So it's like we have injuries, and, and what does our general manager do? Oh, let's sign an 85-year-old wide receiver. Like, that's not what we need. We, you, we're getting ready to go against the track meet, the, the Olympic uh, her, uh, sprint team down in uh, Miami, and it's like, oh, well, let's, let's get a receiver. No, we need cornerbacks. We need people that can cover them, you know, and we'll go into that the next segment. But like Randy hit the nail on the head and I will, I hate agreeing with Randy, but we're either going to have a close game and possibly sneak out a win or the fan base is going to be deflated, deflated. Now I will say that I did say week one and all the pilot episodes that we're going to be anywhere from six and two to eight. No, in the first eight games. Um, and it looks like that's going to happen. And after that, you know, I'm not sure what team we have. Um, you know, you can read all the power rankings you want and all that crap. They still have us considered a top five team. You know, I'm, I'm going to say something that I hate to say, but Detroit possibly could, everything could go through Detroit. Detroit has a big schedule the rest of the season. And you know, they're looking good. They're what five and one right now. And they're not a bad team. Dallas is not a bad team. 49ers are not a bad team. There's a lot of NFC teams that are just okay. Um, you ask me, I think the jets destroy the Cardinals any on any Sunday, you know, does that make our loss worse than Dallas's loss? No, it doesn't. A loss is a loss. Um, you know, I didn't watch much of the Giants game. I, I got to be honest with you. I was pissed. I was uh, playing cards and losing money, and I got even more angry. Um, <laughs> so I can't even give you my analysis on the Giants game. Uh, I know they held it close. I know there was a couple Looked of calls the same. here and there. Um, you know, I, I, honestly, you know, the Dallas game, I watched the first half of that. And, um, you know, it, it, I, I think that they could have lost that game just as easily as they won the game. But again, a win is a win in the NFL, and that's what we we're here to stack them up right now to get ready for the playoffs. So, um, you know, Chris, please give me your insight. Just, just one oh. quick thing, Greg. Sorry, yeah. Chris. You said you're going to tell problem, Sir. You said you're going to you're gonna tell Sirianni to run the ball when he comes to your high school. Yeah, he's coming uh, the 25th. One of October. little problem you have is you didn't spend any money on any quality running back, so that's going to get old. Oh too. no, Go yeah. Ahead. Go ahead, Chris. Swift just Swift was just what top five in the league the five last years the ago. First, no, the first weeks of the season. <laughs> Chris, go ahead. No, I I'm one in five. I'm not going to waste a whole lot of time. You guys have your opinion. It's always based off of DJ. He sucks. Oh, well, I guess we're done then. So <laughs> I, I, I'm, to back that up, to back Offensive that up, line I'm, time. I'm very, no, not at all. I'm very confident in Joe Shane and, and, and Dable. Like I disagree with you on that. I, Tyrod Taylor is a veteran. He's probably the best backup quarterback in the NFL. I mean, he'd be paying decent money. He's a good backup quarterback. That's what he is. He's running the same exact offense because of our line. It stinks. Played a little better. Barkley was there. I know that attributed to that. They worried about Barkley a little bit. They thought we were going to go heavy run. Hey, Barkley played well. I don't think he's on. He had 12 he yards decent. in his first 12 carries. 12 yeah, yards. I mean, just being out there, it, it draws attention enough that they, they worried about Saquon Barkley. Tom and the Rod, teams that have the teams that have the best backup quarterbacks have the crappiest starting quarterbacks. Just <laughs> so just my, my thing know. on and my thing on that is they wouldn't have paid him 160 million dollars if they thought Tyrod Taylor was better. And these guys forgot more about football than than you guys even will know. So like they've been doing it so long, they wouldn't have paid the dude 160 million dollars if he was a bum. They would have kept Tyrod Taylor. He would have been a bridge. We would have missed the playoffs and drafted a quarterback this year, just like you I, guys think. I did hear there was an out clause at the end of this year. Is that true? Not this year. I think after the second year, possibly. Second year. Okay. Yeah. I mean, and like you, you, know, you always say, well, we ain't paying Sam Howe that. Like if Sam Howe keeps doing what he's doing and they keep playing the way they're playing, like just being a decent football team, they're going to need a quarterback. They'll keep him. And you're going to have to pay him probably that much money to keep him when his time comes. That's just the way it's going to be. Like, they're paying DJ mid money. But anyway, the line's the same. It's very vanilla. He hit throws that DJ threw in games. You guys don't watch every New York Giants football game. It looks exactly the same. You couldn't score points. Terrible decision at the end of the half. Like, it was – I don't know why they just didn't kick the field goal. It would have been up 12 nothing. I don't understand that. The end of the game, uh, it was pass interference, Mike. 
like the play before got us on the one yard line and the very next play he grabbed him he grabbed him like three times he should have both had grabbing shot. each other they were all over yeah. each other dude i got yeah. i got still shots oh no, i do i can text <laughs> he it to you there. he got them <laughs> so i'm Chris. actually let's so it sounds I, to I, me like I still want to keep rolling with the one Greg wants my take. My take is defense is playing a little better. Uh, it's bound to happen. They, they've been consistently together now for six weeks. There was a lot of new there. Wink system is very difficult. Defense is playing good. It did it did decent in San Francisco. It kept us in games. If we would have been healthy this year, four and two, three and three right now. That's where I think we would be with a healthy New York Giants football team. And this week coming up, I'll. You know, I'm not – I think we win this game. I think we win this game with Tyrod Taylor playing. Like, our defense played well. I'm not worried about Sam Howe. What do you have, 151 yards last week? Decent in the red zone. They rely on the run. I, I'm not worried about that. I, we'll beat them with, with Tyrod Taylor. Chris, it's, you, it's called, okay. you called last week's game to a T. You said that the Giants would not put up points if Tyrod played, you, but you said the defense was better than everybody thought they would and that even though they wouldn't win, they would cover. And that was a low-scoring yeah. game, very my, close game. As much you, as you, you guys like been to more right. on me, I call my team the way it is. It, it's what it is, and I'm telling you why you we didn't stink. You do that the first week. <laughs> the first four weeks, I, you were dude. wrong every week. <laughs> and I told you why. I, uh, Andrew Thomas got hurt on the first drive. Oh, here it comes. Here it comes. Um, Go down the list of them. The season. All the linemen. <laughs> And one of my one of my buddies, the podcast I listen to a lot, my buddy Bobby Skinner, I'll give him this. He said it. He said it before the season started. New York Giants lose Andrew Thomas. They cannot run their offense. That's why the offense is basically the same. Tyrod Taylor had just under 200 yards. He didn't score. Boneheaded play cost us the game, in my opinion. But it is what it is. And on to Washington, the games. I thought Dak played really well. I thought he bounced back nice. What do you have? 272, a touchdown, and a really nice run. What was that like a 25? 28-yard run for a TD. I think he had a little over 40 yards. Played really well. Uh, the Cowboys, I mean, they're, they're good. Uh, Brandon Cooks, he's getting involved a little bit. I thought in the beginning of the year that was a very underrated pickup. Like, he brings something to your team that you needed. Get him involved. Maybe he's finally catching on. He'll get him involved. I thought they looked good. I don't, I don't think they're going to the Super Bowl. I don't think they're just powerhouse that you like to think they are. I don't. I'm not saying you really – I mean, you, you come across that they can win it all. They're better than Philly. I don't know. I don't think they're that team. Um, I don't know what's going to happen in two weeks. You play them in two weeks, the Eagles? Yeah. That's going to be – that's going to yeah. be fun. So – Eagles... so... Go, go ahead. ahead. No, go ahead. Uh, the Eagles, I was just going to move on to them. And, yeah, yeah, it hurts. Like, it just blows my mind that, like, they weren't running the football. It, me and Steven were watching this game, and I, I think we both were saying that. And then it hurts, though, like – it does. I, I I bring up the line because like it just seems like he's a little adversity. It just messes him up, gets him off the spot. He's that's what I'm saying. Like he's good. I don't think he's Mahomes and them guys. He's not MVP. He's a good quarterback in a great situation. Like it's kind of like I think McNabb and To were better than Hertz and Brown. I mean, go back and look at them stats. Yeah, kind of like yeah. Carson Wentz. Do you think? Do you think Donovan McNabb in your head right now as an Eagles fan? Do you think Hertz is better or McNabb's better? Uh, well, I think Hertz, I mean, just putting it out there, Hertz has only done it for two years where McNabb really one and a half. Yeah. Last year and this year. But let me ask you a question, getting back to that. Like, just, I'm curious to see what the other, what you guys as football fans think about this. So, you know, we have, uh, we have the ball right around midfield. We just come out of the two minute warning. It's third down third nine, right around midfield. Like, the other team has no – Zach Wilson has no timeouts. What do you do there? Do you – like, in my opinion, you run, run the, ball. the ball and you waste 50 seconds. Mm -hmm. And then and then you take the penalty and then you kick the ball at fourth down. And that's what blows my mind. No, we – we we call he either calls an audible or, or I don't know what he did, and he dra drops back and throws the interception and then they return it. Like, and that's what just really frustrated me. Like, you run the ball, you give Zach Wilson a minute to to drive the field to score a touchdown to beat you. Like, to me, it's a no-brainer. Mm. But, like, I just – that <laughs> that blew my mind that that, that was the decision. Um, you know, we did the same thing in Washington. You know, 
we threw a touchdown pass, but we gave Hal a minute, whatever. And then that's when we went to overtime. It's like decisions like that. I just don't get And maybe I'm missing something. I don't know. Um, All right. Just a little one. one, I didn't get to talk really about the Cowboys game itself. I just wanted to say a quick comment. I think weirdly enough, that was my most impressive opinion of Dak Prescott all year. Um, I struggled with him in all of the wins we've gotten. I felt like it was flying high off of defensive awesomeness, really. And he really wasn't impressive. This was the first game that I saw him clawing and fighting and dragging that team to, although it wasn't an impressive win, a win. That was something I've been waiting to see from him all year. I've slightly changed my tone from last week where I was down on Dak because I haven't seen that in him all year until this week. That kind of play he did, I believe, is the play the Cowboys need to improve their offense to a lead again. I don't know if the best, but I think it's going to be a much better offense if Dak can play like that. I know it was was not an impressive win. There was a lot of missed opportunities, but the first couple of drives, he looked so shaky. And it seemed like that run, that run you were talking about, Chris, that run just seemed to build confidence. And after that, there seemed to be a, a bit of a dial, a switch, switch. And it seemed like it seemed like he wasn't scared to get hit. It seemed like he was they call him a slippery salmon, whatever you want to call him. It seemed like <laughs> I noticed you know, over his career, whenever he gets a run like that, it always yeah. fires him up. Like any, yeah. he, he's been doing that for years. Uh, well, yeah. he I actually like, like that about him. I, he I think pretty- no matter. What any of your quarterbacks do, this goes for Dak and all four of your quarterbacks with this crew here on Clash and Conferences podcast. Doesn't matter how impressive they are from week to week, the other three guys are going to say your quarterback sucks. So <laughs> I'm looking forward to it for another eight, nine, ten weeks, however much longer we have left of this. Let's take a quick break, though. We'll get back here shortly and start looking forward to week seven. We are back, Clash and Conferences podcast part two, and looking forward to week seven. Uh, this week we have Dallas is going to be off this week, so instead of uh, a third Dallas prediction, which we don't have, we're going to do predictions for the Detroit and Baltimore game, Ravens game, as our, our third game to predict here. Uh, we also have Washington going to New York to play the Giants. And we got the Eagles in a big home game this week against the Dolphins. So let's get our wheel up here. We'll get three new categories for our internal competition for the week. Let's we'll see what we come up with here. First category is going to be team win. All right, I'm getting one. one. That's, I'm that's getting one, good. Randy. I knew there was. See, there it is. I see. I told you to one. leave your dumb stuff for when the wheel's going on, not that's afterwards. That's you. That's you take, right now. I'll take Detroit in this one. No, you'll take no win. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Randy, you'll have no a a hey, everybody's going to have a bye a week, so it's fair. You guys are all yeah, going to have a week true. where you don't get a chance to score a point. Quarterback rating. Oh, there's two. Chris? Another one that uh, the Giants won't be eligible for. Yeah, maybe i don't know i know sam how won't it's the bye week for the giants this week too it looks like so look randy randy can't get a point there either we're gonna catch up fellas yeah, you guys are gonna catch up a little bye. bit this week but last category for the week is going to be most points total offense so we definitely have an offensive looking week here for uh the giants the redskins and the eagles hmm. So uh, let's. Randy can't score a point. Chris, go I ahead. Why don't, why don't you kick it off, Chris? Let's start with the two guys with the divisional matchup. Let's go, Chris, and then Paul here. I was just saying, I'm glad that uh, Randy can't score a point. Uh, that's nice. Still, do a might catch, be, still, still might tie the Giants. Yeah, yeah still might know. get I, the same amount. <laughs> I think we might get some points this week. I think we can hold Sam Howe. I mean, we did a good job against our defense is getting better a little each week. We're going against Sam Howe. It's not. It's not Josh Allen. You know, they didn't get any points till the fourth quarter. Like, what would Hal do? 151 yards, three rushing yards. I think we're going to beat up on him. His QB rating, we're not worrying about him. Um, they give up a lot most of Most points, yeah. 
Yeah, Should most be. not worrying about them with or without Daniel Jones. We win that game with Daniel Jones, man. I'm telling you, most points. Uh, we're not going to score the most points. Most points this week, um, man. I don't know. I, we might score the most points. I think uh, we're going to win the. Yeah, we're going to win the game, and I think the Eagles aren't going to do very well against Miami. Uh, Giants might get two points there, and then the team win. I might. I might sweep the week. That's my predictions, Mike. I might sweep the I week. I like it. I like it. That's I think good, they need to flex. That's a good comeback for the New York Giants. They um, need to flex your game until s- Sunday morning at 730. That's when they need to flex this game till. It's, it's a 1 o'clock suck. game. I'm going I to the know. game. It's a 1 o'clock game. I'm taking my daughter. She never loses. She's undefeated at every game I've taken to her. And guess what, Paul? Every time I take her, it's the Washington Redskins. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check her off for another one. And her name's Clover, so she's my good luck charm. So the Giants, I think, well, I'm going to sweep the week. But, um, Greg, I, I think you're going to go down. I don't uh, – what's the, what's the spread here? Uh, Eagles are minus two and a half. So Ooh. close to even on a neutral field, buddy. Yeah, that, that, that's true. That's true. Lane Johnson going to play? I don't know. Is he playing yeah. this week? It's too early. That's one thing that it sucks about recording on Tuesday night because it's, it's a little early. I don't even know who my quarterback is going to be. It ain't going to matter against It Washington. don't matter. Well, it does because Daniel Jones is 5-1-1 one, one against you, so I would be feeling really good about it if Daniel Jones played. I don't know what's going to happen with Daniel Jones. Uh, I'm kind of hoping Andrew Thomas plays. That would be a big help, and then we're definitely going to win the game. But uh, Eagles, I think the Eagles are going to lose, and I think – I'd say by 10. I think Miami beat you by 10. Like, I don't – this is going to be a tough one for you. Randy's been saying it. Your schedule's getting tough. Just lost to the Jets. That was probably – that is – by far the best defense you win against this year. So I, that's, that's my pick against the spreads, um, and that's Chris, my prediction for the points. Chris, Detroit, Baltimore yet? Who's uh, going to win? Detroit, Baltimore. Um, I'm going to go with the – I'm going to go with the Lions. I'm going to go with the Lions. What's the spread on that? Uh, looks like it's plus three over and under. Yeah, three. Baltimore minus three. 42 and a half. Baltimore's minus three? It's at Baltimore. Really? By the way, Baltimore's so four two. It's even. Yeah, I'm gonna go with the Lions. I love that Chris Ball? has become our our Vegas Lions guy. <laughs> Dude, I, I I feel like I don't do anything in this in this part, and like my team's not doing anything. I have to get involved. I look forward to doing this with you guys. Paul, you I'm want trying. you want to retort here? I mean, normally we wait till the end to start getting into some of that dumb stuff, but we that five-minute span was just about all of it that we should all have to take. That was the dumbest dumb stuff i ever seen in my life. He's going to be calling me Nostradamus. So, yeah, I, and, 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 and I really hope that we win, and, it's, and I do it. And you I, should. And I, yeah, well, I hope we win not just because it's a W, but just so we don't have to deal with it next week. That's, I mean, that's so much worse than, than the actual loss. Um, I would rather lose again to the bears, uh, <laughs> than lose to the giants this week. I think it'll be a competitive. I know it'll be a competitive game. It's, it's very possible that it's not going to be that great of a game. Uh, there is not a lot of star power anywhere. Um, I understand. And I appreciate you got your NIL money for, saying Daniel Jones and Andrew Thomas's name seven times each. Uh, but do I get anything I really from Barkley? Yeah. I, and, no. that's, and that's a star power. That's some star power. Darren Waller. No. And Banks is playing no. really well. And so, like, and McLaurin, I, I, I think we're all right, man. It's a good matchup for us. I appreciate that. I got a good you. matchup go and, for us. Go ahead and stay in your lane there, buddy, because I think uh, everyone. <laughs> With our backup quarterback. Is, uh, yeah, no. Uh, I hope it starts raining at that game and those nosebleeds. It might actually be too. better than your quarterback. <laughs> um, but uh, no, I, I think it's going to be a good game. <laughs> I don't have, I mean, I think it's going to be an even game. I think it's going to be a crapshoot. Um, I don't think Daniel Jones is going to be a factor, not if he plays or isn't. If he plays, he's not going to be a factor. If he doesn't play, same story. So I actually am hoping that Tyrod Taylor doesn't start. That's my take. I, hope. Uh, I think Randy probably would right. agree with mm-hmm. me that we would be in a worse spot if Tyrod Taylor plays. Um, you know, like the game last week against Desmond Ritter, he became a little little slippery there uh, towards the end, and I don't need that from from uh, from uh, from Tyrod Taylor. But 
I know that if Daniel Jones gets in the open field on a nice run, Turf Monster's going to catch him again like they always do. Boo. But uh, once. Yeah. Yeah, that's all it takes and, is one. I mean, and you know he's tough, Brandy. Like he's 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 a tough son of a bitch, just like Eli was. Man, he's a tough kid, man. No, he's takes not a lot tough. more like, boo no. to knock him down. He does have a well, bad neck injury. I'm worried about it. I was gonna it say, what, isn't he injured? It's man, they're saying it, if it's the same thing from 2021. I mean, back then they were talking about it could have been career ending. Like it's it's bad. But I don't know. I'm, I'm getting mixed things. It's only Tuesday. I have no idea. No All I'm saying is I hope they bring out the De- the Demar Hamlin uh, tagged uh, ambulance on the field for him if he does play. They need to bring <laughs> that down to uh, to to Washington. So I'm I'm looking forward to that. Um, but as far as the other game, uh, I I'm just looking forward to the, to watching that game. I because I was really hyped for the uh, the Bills and the uh, and the Dolphins before, and that did not work out the way I thought it would. Um, you know, uh, the Bills are really a pretty pretty superior team. They had a lapse lapse last week, but um, you know, um, I I think that's going to be a high scoring game. I hope it's a high scoring game, and I think it's going to be a great game. I do think that Miami's going to to pull it out, though. Um, I I really think that the Eagles' defense is just getting worse, and I'm not saying they're playing worse. Is that you're just like You've you've had to say next guy up. You can only say next guy up, but so many times before the next guy up is literally the water boy. And you're just, I mean, this, these are the things, this is how Tom Brady was born. So, I mean, you know, maybe you'll find a dime in the rough, but you're going to, it's going to be rough. Uh, Cause we're not even halfway through the season and your half of your defense is, has already missed at least one game. So I think it's going to be tough. Uh, I think that's really going to be tough. What was the line that we set on that two? You're uh, you got a line of two. Well, two and I mean, a half. Dolph- yeah. So I think the dolphins are going to win. So that kind of takes care of that. But uh, the, the, the lions, I'm never going to say anything nice about the Ravens um, because Mike and I have too many people that we know in Baltimore and <laughs> they, that group is the, is only like is one B to how annoying uh, Dallas Cowboys fans are. So Mm. I, I, I definitely think that, um, mm. yeah, I definitely think that Ravens are uh, definitely vulnerable. No one is happy to play for their coach. It's literally the opposite of the, the Giants. Like, no group of players wants to play for their coach more than the Lions. No one wants to play for Dayball less than the Giants players. You've got their that's star not, players. So, your star players are taking you're like extra so weeks. wrong about him. What'd you say your, one week? Your, you said your he star came players from are, your star players are taking more, extra I, weeks I, off. Just so they don't take unnecessary hits because of their coaching. It's and unbelievable. Bench hurts for Tua. So, if so, only no, they I, had forty million to spend on an offensive line, it'd be great. Yeah, the only the only thing that I think that saves the Ravens is that David Montgomery, little Demo out there, got hurt last week, um, and Jameer Gibbs, who they thought was a savior. I don't know. You, it's like something the Giants would do: draft somebody in the top twelve and then like just put him on the bench. Um, but. You know, I I, th- I think it's going to actually be a pretty close game because it's in Baltimore. But uh, I still Never think that the, I still think the Lions take it since the uh, since Baltimore is favored. I think the Lions win that line as well. Um, but uh, I take it. I could care less who's talking next, as long as it's not freaking Chris. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Let's go to Greg. Reminder, though, real All quick: right. Bears forty, Washington twenty. Thanks. Wow. Wow. I hope they hey. Paste it all over. Get a sell it like you know. Rent a billboard for a week. Let's give us some motivation. <laughs> Why don't we have one of our uh, one of our like veteran players die this week? Something like that. Can we get something uh, some motivation? Ooh. Man, you always say the right thing at the right time, don't you? <laughs> gotta beat, ball. gotta beat the Giants. Don't care what happens. <laughs> uh, just looking at the games. Better hope. Um, <laughs> Looking at the games, uh, Chris, this may be a bad omen for you. I am 0 for my last several bets and 0 for <laughs> my last gambling bets from Atlantic City. And but with Dak Prescott, turn it around. Listen, this week. I, how about how I, about picks for last week, Ray? What were you for picks for last week? I, I didn't make any good ones. That's oh, what I'm saying. Oh, I'm sure. like, okay, I'm oh for. You guys I'm remember when Greg told us he didn't and gamble in week one, and now every week he's talking about his bets yeah. that he lost. And <laughs> listen, we were in Atlantic City. It's it was it was fun. <laughs> we had a good time, and I did not do very well. But hey, I call it my charitable donation every year. Um, 
poetic justice, Chris. I was watching the game the same place where I watched the Eagles beat the Giants at the uh, playoffs last year. So maybe it was poetic justice that we got beat there. Um, I, I, uh, I'm, I'm leaning towards the Giants this week. Did they play hurt so good? Yeah, we we played that twice and then didn't play it the rest of the game. (laughs) Um, I'm going to take the Giants over the Redskins this week. Um, you know, kind of looking at the other game, Detroit at Baltimore. I'm going to take the Ravens. Um, Greg, it don't matter what quarterback plays, right? It does matter what quarterback. What do you mean? I'm talking about for my game. Oh, for your game? No, it does not matter. I'm, just I'm taking the Giants either way. Um, Thanks, and then for Greg. our game, <laughs> I think our game is going to be um, high scoring. I really do. I hope so. Um, and I hope it's competitive. Um, we have a lot of holes on defense, a lot of holes on offense. Um, Lane Johnson came back, I believe, and I think we talked about this earlier. It's just a sprain, a uh, grade one sprain. So he's questionable for Monday uh, or Sunday. We do not win without him, uh, my opinion. Um, I don't think, I think How we come were, he's allowed to say it. What? You lose one lineman and you're he not only said it once. Our whole right side. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Jesus. We lost our whole lineman, our whole everybody. We, we <laughs> lost our right side, so I'm allowed to say that. Um, we lost everybody but the worst one. Somehow Neil doesn't get hurt. He's the worst one on our line. Listen, he's the, he's the best playing. one. <laughs> Your your oh, boy is straight off the couch. You're gonna you can't that send him great. to the practice squad. You gotta yeah. keep him up. Oh, he's playing. He'll be he'll okay. play he'll play guard. <laughs> Dude, that was great. Right off I the couch. I want to see your uh, I want to see you get that shirt straight off the couch. Yeah, I'll, I'll get it. I'll get uh, one. I think they win. Um, I think the Eagles win in a close one. I do. Um, I think we stun the world, and I think we win in a close one. Um, and. I think we actually control the ball and we run and we control the clock and we keep Miami off the field Never is how happen. I think it happens. I think Tua has a bad game. I think we get to him. Um, and I, I think that's what happens. It's just w- what I think. Um, I don't have any scientific proof to back this <laughs> one up, guys. I'm sorry. Um, looking at the stats, um, team win. I think the Giants are going to get a win. And the Eagles uh, quarterback rating. Um, I think it's either going to be Hurts by default. if we win by default. Um, or Jared win. Goff. <laughs> yeah, you forgot about Jared Goff. No, oh, man, oh, wait a minute. Can, where you can use that? I don't think no, they're, yeah, not, they're not, not part our, of our yeah. internal yeah. points. Oh, wow, wow. It's just so we got to have two, three garbage oh, yeah. quarterbacks make it up. <laughs> Yeah, the, quarterback, the quarterback rating highest maybe 43 but someone's got to win right that's right um and then most points i'm going to take the eagles because i think that we're going to have to score 30 some points to be competitive in this game that's why um, i switched because i was thinking you were going to lose that's exact i was going to say yeah. you but i'm like well wait a minute but yeah yeah i think well, that's our only us. chance um i think that we kind of do what the giants did and kind of try to slow the game down and and play Good defense. The problem is our corners do not like man-to-man coverage, and they are fast, fast receivers down there. So we are in a huge matchup problem. Uh, Bradbury hates playing man press. Uh, Slay was out last week, so uh, who Why? knows if he's going to be back? I, I think he'll be back this week, and I think um, <laughs> Blankenship's not going to be back though. He, I think he broke some ribs, so I think we're in trouble. Um, but I think we can pull it off. You better hope they don't rush back Slay, though, because he could get just absolutely toasted if he's not 100%. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know what – I mean, I don't know if we're going to try to play man or try to play some sort of cover two, cover four. I don't know. I mean, that's what the Jets did to us, so maybe that's what we do to the Dolphins. I don't know. We bring eight in the box and then disguise it and bring everyone back in coverage. But, I mean, you got to have the linebackers that are athletic enough to do that, and we just don't have it. Sorry, Randy. I'm sorry that no, I'm, I'm just. This is oh. like besides Topher's week one talking about his offensive line. This has been the most boring observation of a football game this whole podcast. I want to I'm add sorry. on one thing We're about talking the Eagles. about next week. We're not I want to add one thing everything. on about the Eagles, Greg. And I'm right. not trying to pile it on, but didn't you go against their backup corners this week as well? Yeah, practice squad. That's what I'm saying. I to me it was arrogance. Is Complete that why they were arrogance. trying to throw the ball? Yeah, I I'm, better hope that's opinion. what it was. Yeah, well, I mean, and if it was skill, that's because you're going to have to throw know. the ball this week. 
We are, but we're also going to have to run the ball to establish the pass. Paul, tell him, how do you do it, Paul? Nobody's going to respect the pass game if you don't uh, get the run game going first. And exactly. if you don't spend any money on running backs, you can't run the ball. That's why Listen, we would have won with Daniel Jones last week because we would have uh, ran the ball. And they would have worried about Saquon. Daniel Jones is good in play action. It's it's. How are we sucks, talking about the Giants still? Because yeah. like, I'm going to be talking a lot next week. Listen, that's next week. I get one. Right. And then probably Listen. two the next time we play them. See. We'll see. All right. Cleveland man, what do you got? Sitting in your car in Cleveland. Hey, so Washington uh Washington Giants. I love this matchup because I feel like Washington, catch this. This is crazy. Washington was close to beating the Eagles and being four and two. If it wasn't for an angry Bears team, they'd be five and one right now. And I think they're gonna annihilate the Giants. I am done believing in your Giants. Right if down, Mike. Your boy, oh, sorry, sorry. If your boy, <laughs> if your boy plays DJ, the the Redskins are gonna wipe the floor with him. I believe. Uh as far as the Eagles and the bounce back game. Now, you never know. As far, the, the thing that worries you me. You bounce no, around Jones. a lot. I can tell you that. The, the Giants no, bounce Jones. around a lot. He's going to have far, a back week. He's going to bounce back. The Eagles and Miami, I am a little bit worried because Miami's coming off a big win. Eagles are coming off of a loss. I feel like that does affect gameplay. But oh. I don't. The Eagles, I do believe, are getting worse and worse every week. I do believe that they are going to continue to be the team that believe. comes in over cocky and over arrogant. Yes, they they see the threat with Miami. I think they're going to come out with their A game, but I don't believe they can score with that team. The only thing, and I hate saying this, I do believe their coach is a good coach, which is going to keep the game somewhat tight, but I think Miami is going to have a ton of yards against them. I think Miami is going to run up and down that field very well. I think that the Eagles are going to make some very, very good calls, but I think Miami beats them. My Detroit Lions, well, they're not mine, but I do feel like they're going to own Baltimore. Baltimore looks horrific, in my opinion, right now. The way they played the Steelers two weeks ago, I, I, they're just not putting up a lot of points. I think that Detroit is going to score a lot of them. I think that's going to be a fairly solid game for Detroit. My predictions, as far as the other three, I don't care. I'm not in it. You guys are going to somehow slowly start to catch up to me because I can't even play. But all that it's, being said. You, act like, you like, act like every team is not going to get a bye at some point. I mean, I'm pretty sure there's a rule that you have to have a bye. Well, sure, sure. I guess, you know, you could say, you could say that that's true. That's true. But I, I still, I still feel like. It sucks that I got to have the first one. We'll put it that way. It's going to be fair but for anyway. all, but I think the bye week came at the right time for the other three teams needing a chance to catch up to you, Randy. You're crushing in the internal competition true, right now. It's going, to keep the, it's going to keep the podcast interesting. Because because of... Uh, your dumb shit I, will do that. Especially when I get my <laughs> three. Actually, you're only up seven. three on Greg now. It's not as much as I thought after I look back at it. Me? Yeah, you're, yeah you got nine, got Greg got six. This week. And he's probably going to get a free point or two next week, which is very frustrating, but is what it is. Hey, any uh, any interest in Trey Lance yet there, Chris? No, nah, man, I'm good. You can give him to Washington if you want. I mean, like we said, it doesn't matter what quarterback plays. They're both better than Sam Howe. After... <laughs> All right. <Sure. laughs> very confident in that. In that Excellent topic, way to end topic. it. <laughs> I think so. I was Start. actually wait. I was actually waiting after he said we, Trey Lance for the for the usual send off line. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. I mean, it's uh, there. You go with that dumb. I just shit. wanted to get but, one uh, more dig in. Yeah, we we started well, you can off say and it we're this gonna, week. and you we're can say yeah. It this week. <laughs> uh, I, started off with it. We're gonna end with it. Apparently, I think we will. Stuff coming from you. It was a heck of a good episode, right, though, guys. We're looking forward to. Uh, Week seven, looking forward to a really good internal NFC East matchup, and we'll be back in a week to to see how things turned out. Sounds good. All Have right, a good week, fellas. See you guys. See you from Cleveland, fellas. Sam House sucks. <laughs> no, Danny Jones sucks. I'll be. Uh, I'm going to tune in straight up from India next week just to talk to you. <laughs>